I don't know if you can see my head, but whatever. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit of tactical versus practical. And this subject has probably been touched upon a billion times by a billion different fucking people. But I'm going to do it myself because I can. Okay, now, tactical versus practical. If you can't see me, please forgive me. Now, take this for instance. This is my first gun, Glock 23 40 caliber. And my latest gun, Ruger Mini 14, ranch rifle, all weather, blah, blah, blah. Now, people, the Glock is approximately $500, give or take, okay? The Gen 5 is out now, so that might be a little more money. But figure Glock, if you pay more than 600 bucks for a Glock, you're an idiot, okay? Now, that's just the base price Glock. Now, you buy a Glock for 500 bucks. You spend $2,000 on ammunition, okay? Some other guy buys a Glock for 500 bucks. Let's say it's the Glock 19, because the Glock 19 is the most popular. That guy takes 2,000 bucks, and he brings his Glock either to a local gunsmith or to one of those guys you see on the fucking, uh, all these other videos with assailants, arms, or, or some other shit. And he takes the gun for $2,000 and they put a special stipple job on it. They cut away this material. Uh, they put a new trigger in. They re, re um, uh, reimagine the trigger, um, uh, yeah, the trigger. Trigger guard. What's my thought there? They put a new barrel in that extends past the where it normally would. That new barrel has a really nice color to it, gold or silver, because it's got like a coating on it. Put new sights on it. Okay. They put a mag well here. They they, they put something on the back of there. As they, they they put a Punisher logo back here that glows in the dark. Okay. And they, they just have all this crap on the freaking gun for two thousand bucks. Okay. Now. The guy with the $500 Glock 19 and the guy with the $2,500, the guy with the $500 Glock 19 and 2,000 rounds of ammunition. The guy with the $500 Glock 19 with $2,000 worth of pimped out upgrades. Who is the better shooter? I'll give you another example. I'm making my down duck mode today. I rented the SIG MPX SBR. Now SIG makes an MPX with a 16 inch barrel. And it shoots nine, it's a, it's a nine millimeter AR type rifle, okay? It's nine millimeter. Okay, and there's a 40 in it, 57 SIG, but most guys want the nine millimeter because nine millimeter is more common. Uh, now, I rented the SIG MPX SBR at a range and there's a loophole to the law which says that the FFL and the range can buy a otherwise banned gun and they can keep it and allow their customers to shoot it under their supervision. But they can't let a customer take it home with them. And I couldn't hit a single thing. I literally couldn't hit the paper because the buttstock is this big and I hit my nose on the side. It was, just, it was a waste of money. It was a waste of 25 bucks plus box ammunition Box is free, by the way, I'm sorry, box is free. And I just couldn't come with it. Now, they do make a SIG MPX 16 inch barrel, but if you live in a certain state, you may have to take the pistol grip off, take the bus stuck off, put that communist grip on there. Um, you may have to change out the barrel because the barrel may have a, a thread on it. You get a plain barrel. Then you may have to put a stopper in the magazine so the magazine only feeds 10 rounds. Because you live in a bad state. And then there's the SIG MPX pistol. Now the SIG MPX pistol is a SIG MPX SBR. The only difference is, instead of putting a little buttstock on it, you put the prosthetic brace on it, which is a buttstock. It is. Okay, so I shot the MPX SBR at the range. It was their, their dealer sample. Clean the paper. That was a couple years ago. This year, I'm at the range in January. There's a federal agent there. He has his SIG MPX. I stopped talking about the last one I had, I used. He's like, get a fresh target. Puts one up, we put one up. He tells me, hold it like this, hold it like that. Steady that, look through the dot there. Put the target down further like that, hold it like this, and you got it. The butt stock was very comfortable. 
And he said, that's not a buttstock. That's the pistol version, and that's the prosthetic arm brace. They use it as a buttstock, and it's a really good buttstock. Now, because he's a federal agent, he's exempted from a lot of laws about pistols and stuff like that. So, yeah. And he's a real cool guy. He said, politicians suck. Politicians told me they were out there looking out for me. I said, no, you're not looking out for me. You're infringing on legal gun owners. His rightful case had the anti-safe act patch on. He's a real cool guy. So, SIG MPX, 16-inch barrel. Some states, totally legal. Other states, you got to modify it to make it not an assault weapon. SIG MPX pistol is banned in some states because some states don't want you to have a pistol that's based on a rifle. SIG MPX SBR is banned in even more states. Plus, you got to pay 200 bucks and get permission. Now, let's look at the Ruger police carbine. I'm a Ruger stockholder. I don't own enough stock to sit on a board meeting, but they must read my mind because I said Ruger has to bring back the pistol, uh, the um, uh, police carbine, which is an old rifle, no features, just plain rifle that shoots handgun magazines 9 and 40. They brought back the 9, made it like a takedown version, kind of like the Ruger 1022 takedown. It feeds 9mm, other calibers may come, we don't know, and it feeds every Ruger magazine. Plus, you can actually take the plate off, take the magwell out, put a Glock magwell in, and now it shoots Glock mags. And there's a threaded barrel version, or if you're, depending on where you live, you get a plain barrel version. And that could be under 800 bucks when the SIG MPX is about $2,000 range, plus if you want the SBR as a tax stamp, blah, blah, blah. Now, let's set the scene. Let's say two guys go into the FFL together, and one guy buys the Ruger 9mm. Now, both guys have $2,500 on them. They walk into the FFL together. One guy buys the Ruger pistol carbine, police carbine, and the Glock 19, and he gets two 15 round mags, Ruger mags for the rifle, two 15 round Glock mags for the pistol. The adapter is free f with the gun, and he buys 10 33 round magazines for Glock, and let's assume ammunition is $300 for a thousand rounds. So he's got 500 for the handgun, 800 for the rifle, just estimates, that's 13, okay. He gets a real good deal on the magazine, so he pays two hundred dollars for ten thirty round magazines. Okay, he gets a good deal on that. He gets fifteen hundred bucks. Okay, and then for the other thousand bucks, he gets three six nine three thousand rounds of ammunition because the ammunition is three hundred bucks a case. Let's assume that. Let's assume it. Okay, and he has a hundred bucks left. So for 2500 bucks, he has 100 bucks left, and he's got a pistol, a rifle, two 15-round mags for the pistol, two 15-round mags for the rifle, 10 33-round mags, and 3,000 rounds of ammunition. The other guy, with his money, gets the SIG, and the FFL gives him $2,000 on that. And he pays two hundred dollars for the tax stamp, and he gets a thousand rounds of nine millimeter for three hundred bucks. Okay, we're just guesstimating this example. Okay, now he has to go home and wait four months for permission to pick his gun up. And the guy with the Glock and the pistol, pistol carbine, he uses the extra hundred bucks for five range fees. So for twenty five hundred bucks, he's got rifle, pistol. 10 33 round mags, two 15 round Glock mags, two 15 round Ruger mags, 3,000 rounds of ammunition, and he goes through the range five times. At the end of four months, he's got 1,000 rounds left because he hasn't shot him yet. So he's put 2,000 rounds through the guns, 1,000 rounds a piece for each gun, put it that way. Okay, the other guy is just getting permission to pick his gun up from the ATF. And that guy has one 25-round magazine 
which is not interchangeable between the guns. Who is tactically badass here? Okay, if you spend 2500 bucks to get one SBR and one 25 round magazine and a thousand rounds of ammunition and wait four months for it, okay, I don't think you're tactically badass. I think you should make me a balloon animal or let me honk your horn or let me see if I can get you one of my little cousin's birthday parties, whatever, okay? And people have this mentality where I have to have the most badass thing possible. Eric, my Iraq veteran, has said the best AR-15 is the A-2. The first AR-15 had like the Vietnam era, had like the plastic triangular, yeah, and it was, okay. The A-2 has a more rounded off hand grip, what call it LPI for grip. Okay, there's no rails, no, just, just a butt stock of pistol and a regular fore, forearm, foregrip. Okay, no, no, no tactical crap, okay? Eric says that is the best AR-15. Eric the FFL, Eric the veteran, Eric the gun collector, Eric the gun historian, Eric the gunsmith. He said that. So I'll believe him on it. But you got guys that, no, 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 no. I want the newest AR-15 with the quad rail this or alpha rail that, and I want to put a scope on it, and I want to have that forward vertical grip that pulls down into a knife and I want to have a special Duraco job by a master artist with all this fine artwork on it and I want to have this muzzle device and I want to have this laser and I want to have these um, 45 degree angle sights like a new roller prone and I want to do this and I want to do that okay and they're in a rifle $3,000 and every minute you spend turning, tweaking, screwing Attaching, zeroing, is one minute you're not spending shooting. Every dollar you spend on this and that and this and that, okay, is one dollar you don't spend on a bullet or a range fee. Because guys think they're in a video game, guys think they're in a movie. 20 years ago, Tales of the Gun. Guns of the Commando. I'll see if I can find it still online. I'll put it down below if it's still available. Guns that are used by commandos around the world. And they're talking about, they're also featuring a, a, a new um, uh, company called Black called Blackhawk and Black, Blackwater. And this new company called Blackwater teaches military, law enforcement, civilian, it's kind of like Thunder Ranch, okay? It's a brand new company. And there's guy, one of those guys said they'll do a pistol, they'll do a, a, a tactical carbine course and they'll have a guy with all this shit in his wife, all this stuff. And after the first day of running, jumping, skipping, turning, twisting, okay, lifting up, down, in, out, crawling, he'll go back to his hotel, take everything off and come back with iron sights, plain rifle iron sights. Okay. People have this thing that they have to have the best thing, they have to have the greatest, and they're, they're, they're buying the do it okay? When I went to the range with this, the guy next to me had an AR-15. He was, he was jealous that I had this. He said, I gotta, I, I gotta have one of those. When was the last time you heard a guy say, I went to the range with my AR-15, and I was real jealous because the guy next to me had a Ruger Mini 14. Well, I can say that you can't, so, eh. Okay? And... This is game was all about history, okay? Wilson Combat. I love Wilson Combat magazines. I love Wilson Combat moon clips. Okay? I've had guys tell me they spent $5,000 on a Wilson Combat. Because it's hand-fitted. Bill Wilson started out as a jeweler, believe it or not. Working for his father. And he branched the guns. Wilson Combat, $5,000 gun. Hand-fitted. Finance machinery known to man. Finance equipment known to man. Hundreds of, of hours put into a single gun to make it look so great. And when they get the gun, the first couple hundred rounds jam. Because the gun is so tight that that first couple hundred rounds are going to jam on you just because the gun has to loosen up. Then there are guys that go out to Rock Island Armory, which is a company in the Philippines, the Philippine Islands, okay? And they buy a gun that looks like a World War I gun with cheaper grips on it, which costs $400. I've never heard one guy complain about Rock Island Armory. 
Not one. I've seen guys buy them in person. I've seen guys shoot them at the range. Okay, I've never heard one guy complain about a rock on army gym. Maybe you have, and please tell me about it if you have. You can do that. But I never heard about one gym. So a $5,000 Wilson combat gun that's going to jam for a couple hundred rounds until it loosens up versus $400 rock on armory gun that's going to shoot whatever I put in it right away. No jams. Listen, look is cool. Okay, looks like a guy out of grandpa's basement if he died, but okay. And we can do um, other things throughout history. Okay. Um, let's talk about the greatest sniper of all time. No, I don't mean Chris Kyle. I mean Simoa uh, White Death. Okay, let's, I forget his fucking name. Uh, let's call him White Death. Maybe I'll put his name down below. White Death, okay? Now, White Death is credited with killing a thousand people. 200 with an SMG. And 800 with a rifle. Okay. Now, what did he use? He used the Finnish rifle, which is an upgrade of the Mosin Nagant. The Mosin Nagant is Kershaw. The Finnish version is Zero Tolerance. Okay, it's a finer grade Mosin Nagant rifle. With a five round fixed box, he put the rounds in my super clip and he was shooting iron sights. He killed 800 guys. Now, I don't want to talk about good versus evil versus politics, but he killed 800 guys with that rifle. White death. Okay? It happened in something called the Winter War, which took place between Russia and Finland during World War II, so no one cared what was going on. Okay? White death. Chris Kyle, great American, by his own admission, his equipment was out of control. Chris Kyle said publicly, he's not greater than Carlos Hathcock. Because Carlos Hathcock had a regular rifle with a regular scope, and Chris Kyle had all this crap, and all this, these doohickeys that can help him. He said, I'm a monkey on the thing. Okay? So, greatest name of all time, white death, five shot bolt action with iron sights. Okay? Why is this America? This is America because a couple hundred years ago, Bunch of guys got drunk on whiskey and they didn't want their taxes raised 1%. So they took their hunting rifles, went into the woods, and ambushed the greatest army that God has ever put on this earth, the British Army. The British Army was defeated by guys with hunting rifles hiding in the woods, killing their officers. Farmers, trappers, hunters, okay, blue collar workers with hunting rifles defeated the British. Okay, now let's talk about politics. Let's talk about Afghanistan. Now, I have family that served in Afghanistan. I have friends that served in Afghanistan. I mean this merely as an academic thing. When Afghanistan first broke out, I left because I heard a story of a guy in Afghanistan who had a rocket mounted on a camel, which obviously wasn't going to do anything, but he said it looks good from the air when you look at it, look down from a plane and see it. Okay. And I said, how are they going to defeat us? Make us laugh to death? The Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Savage people, barbarians, kill children, terrorists, blah, blah, blah. Okay? They did one thing no one ever could do. They captured a Navy SEAL and killed him. No Navy SEAL was ever captured behind enemy lines alive until Neil Roberts fell out of a Chinook helicopter and was captured and executed quickly. The team went to rescue him. One guy got the Navy, the Air Force Cross posthumously. One guy got the Navy Cross and is still alive. Both crosses are getting upgraded to Medal of Honor. Okay? But these guys who can't read, these guys who live in huts, their grand, their ancestors lived in 2,000 years ago, these guys who are using piles of sheet metal left over from the Russians, these guys who rape goats, they're killing a lot of Americans. They're costing Americans billions of dollars because they're hiding in mountains and firing down on people. And also because they have no fear of death. Now obviously I'm, a, I'm an American supporter, but just to illustrate the point, they can cause problems for the US military because they are not afraid to die. 
and they're willing to work with what they have. Afghanistan, I, I, um, Vietnam, same thing. I had a cousin in Viet I had a cousin by blood who was career Air Force, retired E8, explosives disposal. He served in, in Vietnam. I have a cousin by marriage, volunteered for the army, volunteered for Vietnam twice. Each time got the bronze star with valor. Okay, first time saved three men by enemy lines. Why did the Vietnam? Why did America lose Vietnam? Well, simple. America won every battle in Vietnam. The Americans displayed courage in Vietnam that rivaled courage of the greatest generation. But you had guys in Vietnam that had piles of sheet metal given to them by the Russians for free, and they were rice farmers. Okay. And what they would do is they would jump out of the bushes and ambush the Americans at point blank range with their piles of sheet metal. Okay? And the commanders in Vietnam didn't care if they lost 10 men as long as they killed one American. And they created such hysteria in America that the American people demanded their own government leave Vietnam after thousands of lives and billions of dollars. Okay? Because they had the mindset to fight. Now, obviously, I'm not a fan of communism. I'm not a fan of anti-Americanism. Obviously, I'm not. I'm just illustrating a point. Lee Harvey Oswald. Yes, he did it, okay? I've seen documentaries. I've read the books. He did it, okay? Don't give me that shit, okay? And if you say back into the left in the comments, I'm deleting the comment, okay? I've heard guys online tell me, back into the left, back into the left. I'm like, dude, I'm an adult. Don't say that to me, okay? Lee Harvey Oswald. He buys a Marker Carcano rifle through mail order. He buys it because it's under 30 bucks and he's poor. No one wants the rifle because no one even knows it exists. To this day, you can't sell one for $2 because before he did this, no one cared about it because it was garbage. After he did this, no one wants it because it's notorious. Marker Carcano, one of the least cared about rifles in all of human history. Okay? He takes that rifle for 25 bucks or less online. On online, on, on mail order catalog. Modern equivalent to being online. If online, okay? He's the reason you can't buy a gun online, you know, because well, you can't buy no mail, mail order guns now, because I am. He's the reason. He takes the rifle, and he fires three shots, and he changes the world. Okay? Lee Harvey Oswald, by himself, elected a Lyndon Johnson, one of the worst presidents ever. Okay, and Lee Harvey Oswald was a United States Marine. He was an excellent rifleman. He betrayed his country, went to the Soviet Union, came back with a Russian bride, and lobbied to support the Castro regime while Castro was trying to destroy the United States. So I'm not a big sympathizer of him. But demonstrating the principle, he knew how to use a rifle, or leave his politics aside. And good or evil beside, he put it to use in the old history. Okay? People are ingrained that they're in a video game. They're in a movie. Okay? And they're not. Okay? I have to have this badass gun with all this stuff on it because of the movie. Well, what if you go into the store and you walk past a thousand good rifles because you want one you saw on television? Okay, what if every cool rifle from television and video games is sold out and you pass up Ruger Minis and you pass up Caltech SU sixteens? Okay, and I give you an example of Caltech SU sixteen. My FFL partner, business partner, bought a Caltech SU sixteen. And knowing my business partner knowing him being the business partner, he probably got a real reduced rate on it. He bought a Caltech SU sixteen and now my FFL can't get them period. He buys a Caltech SU sixteen. Which is MSRP 650. Ugh. Okay, he brings it to his house in Virginia, whips out all the standard capacity magazines, and puts thousands of rounds of brass and steel cake. He just feeds everything in the gun. Flawless gun. Flawless. His friend, a retired Secret Service agent, buys a $4,000 AR. Six, a six hour AR type rifle. $4,000. He puts one steel case rifle round in it and it jams him so bad he's got to take it to the FFL, uh, the um, gunsmith and have it detail stripped and cleared and possibly repaired. 
Okay? Under 600 bucks, rifle shoots 4,000 rounds of everything. Over 4,000 bucks, rifle gets stuck on one steel case round. Take this rifle. No pistol grip, no bayonet lug, no flash hider, no, 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 none of this stuff, okay? Just a rifle. Grand action, okay? Just a hardcore rifle well built, like a tank, okay? Just like nothing fancy says it is, okay? A couple hundred bucks cheaper than an R15. Many bucks cheaper than the SIG this and, this and the Heckler that and uh, Wilson, okay? Okay? This rifle. I pull the trigger and the bullet hits the target. Pull the trigger, let the bullet hit the target, okay? What is the longest serving rifle in US military history? 1903 Springfield. Five shots, 30 out six. It served as the principal army gun until 36. Served as the principal Marine Corps Navy gun until 42. Ooh. Served as the v as a sniper rifle until Vietnam. Okay. Hmm. There's a guy, I'm gonna put a link below. His name's EJ. EJ has a really nice kitchen. He's got a lot of money at his disposal. Got Smith the Wilson J Frank, Glock 19, Kimber 1911, made in my hometown. Uh, Remington 870, Palm put pistol grip, band, uh, the um, glass with buttstock. Uh, yeah, AR 15. Then he pulls, and he has his uh, Turkey 20 gauge. It looks like an 870 Junior. It's his son's turkey gun. What are the, which of those guns is his family's primary home defense gun? Watch the video and find out. People are ingrained with this mentality of movies and video games and tactical badassery and I gotta, I gotta have this because I saw it in a movie. Or I gotta have this because Delta Force Border. Or I gotta have this because that, okay? But they don't understand that the rifle underneath is still the rifle. Okay. It's still the gun. And sometimes the cheaper guns are better. Because when you buy the more expensive gun, the gunsmiths at the factory are making sure all the parts are nicely polished. They're making sure all the little doohickeys, the, the bells, the whistles, the, the logos, all this stuff is nice and neat and glitters and glows in the dark and sparkles and acts as an alarm clock for you when you wake up in the morning, okay? But when they have the more economic style rifle, they spend time making sure the rifle's action works. It might not be as polished, the lettering might not be as cool looking, it might not glow in the dark, but they focus on the action, okay? This is under $500, okay? I will take this Put in the dirt, put in the mud, put in the chalk, put in the shit. I will put in any you want me to put in, and I will pull the trigger, and it will go boom. This, I'll put in the mud, I'll put in the dirt, I'll put in the rain, I'll put, I'll put whatever I want to put it in. I'll pull the trigger, it will go boom. Okay? Get into the mentality of looking at the gun's function. Get into the mentality of reading up on the gun, and figure out that maybe the $800 gun is better than the $5,000 gun. Save yourself some money, buy more ammunition, and learn how to shoot the damn thing. Having a $2,000 Glock, having a $4,000 AR-15, does not tell me you're a badass, it tells me you're a bad deal maker. Because you're more concerned about me looking at you, and you're more concerned about me thinking how badass you are, then you are about actually being badass. Okay? When I see guys walking around with $2,000 Glocks, $4,000 AR-15s, I see all this crazy stuff on all this shit about, oh, I got this, I, it goes in the dark, it has a, a clock built into the, I mean, what the hell is wrong with you? Okay, I don't think you're cool, I think you're stupid. Okay, you spent all your money on your gun, 
You have no money for ammunition, no money for range fees, no money for lessons. Okay? And all you're doing at home is doing taking this off, putting that on, adjusting that, resuming that, repositioning that, do this, that, twist that, turn that, put that on. Okay. And that's time you're not spending at the range. I'm gonna buy the gun, take it out of the box, bring it to the range, and shoot it. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna have more money in my pocket, and I'm gonna know how to shoot. Okay, and then at the end of the month, when your bills can't get paid, okay, at the end of the month, when you have a, a car payment due, a dental bill due, you match your credit cards on a, on, on, on a Gucci Glock, okay, you look like a goddamn fool. The guys in, the, in Rangers and Delta Force and Legionnaire and SAS and uh, Seven Macau, okay, those guys are funded by the taxpayer. They have $4,000 rifles and $3,000 handguns because they're funded by the taxpayer. But you know what else the taxpayer funds for them? Ammunition! When you see a guy from uh, Force Recon, well, they, they changed the Glock 19, I think, but you would see guys, guys from Force Recon with $2,000 1911s. The taxpayers are also giving them 10,000 rounds of ammunition per person per month. So they're shooting 10,000 rounds of ammunition a month downrange. And they're getting good at it. Okay, you are not getting good at it. You spend all your money on the gun and no more ammunition. And you look like a fool. Okay, Eric said you could buy a crate of Moser Nagans for under $1,000, maybe. Buy a clear ammunition for another thousand under a thousand dollars and arm five or six guys with a really cool rifle as opposed to going out and getting a five thousand uh, dollar bolt action sniper weapon system with a big scope on it and only one guy. So, think about that. Think about practical versus tactical. Thank you.